It has now been seven weeks since my laparoscopic hysterectomy, and I have finally been released from my doctor. Yay! So it has been almost seven weeks since my surgery. I had my follow-up with my doctor a couple days ago, and he released me. He said, you look great, go live your life, do the things, see ya. And that's exactly what I intend to do. So when I went to my follow-up appointment, I had several questions for my doctor, which I'm gonna share those with you in today's video. And now that I've been released, which means I have no restrictions, I can now lift, push, and pull things over 10 pounds. And I wanna tell you how I feel about that and how I'm going to approach getting myself back to what I call normal life. So if you are up to speed on my hysterectomy and all the videos, that's fantastic. If not, I'll link them in the description box below. I documented my recovery pretty much week to week in all of my previous videos, but I had a laparoscopic hysterectomy almost seven weeks ago. My uterus, my cervix, my fallopian tubes, and my ovaries were removed. So I was instantly put into surgical menopause and I have been under restrictions for the past six weeks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my belly. You're gonna see a dramatic improvement in my incision site. And at my follow-up appointment with my doctor, I learned something that absolutely blew my mind. And I'm gonna tell you what that is when I show you my belly. But now that I've been released, he said I can do anything that I want to. I know that I am not recovered. I am fully aware that there are things still going on in my belly area that I need to be careful when I do certain things. I told you all in other videos, I don't have full mobility to turn my body. And that's because when I turn, I can feel things still pulling in my belly area. And I don't like that feeling. I mean, I'm gaining definitely a lot of mobility back, but I don't have my full mobility. So I love to walk and every day I go on a walk and I have not been on a walk until just this past week. I did one little short walk by myself and I could tell that when I got home, my belly was burning. I had pushed it, but I've been on several walks since then. I actually went on a walk earlier today and I can tell that I'm feeling better. I'm moving better. It's not, my, my stomach is not as sore. So that's something that I really am going to have to work myself into and just ease into my walking routine because I like to walk about 10,000 steps a day. And as of today, I think I did like 1500 or something like that. So I am nowhere near normal or where I want to be, but that is going to be a process. And before my surgery, I used to do certain stretches every day. I would lay in the floor, I had a stretching routine, and I can do some of them, not all of them. The ones that I can do, I don't have full mobility to do, but I can tell that about every week I take little baby steps and I can do things more and more and more, which is fantastic. So my last video on my recovery was at week four and now I'm almost at week seven. And I've explained that my recovery has been slow. It really has just been baby steps and man, they have been baby steps. But let me give you some examples of how I knew that things were getting better because once you get to this stage in your hysterectomy recovery, it's not leaps and bounds. You can't look down and see progress because your incision sites are healing. Yes, they look better, but everything is really internal. But I knew things were getting better in a couple ways. The first four weeks after my surgery, I was kind of hunched over. I walked really slow and small steps and I kind of kept my arms in because it would hurt to spread things out. And I was walking into the grocery store the other day and zipping across the parking lot and I realized I'm walking normal. Like my normal step, my normal step link, my arms were moving and it just was like, wow, I'm walking normal. And it felt really, really good when I realized that. And then on the drive to my doctor's appointment, which is we were in the car for four hours, we were actually on the way home and we had hit some potholes on the interstate or some, you know, bumps. And it dawned on me, the car ride was not hurting my stomach because up until now, for the full six weeks, riding in the car hurt so bad. Just the jostling of the car and just the regular rhythm of my body doing this hurt my stomach. I did not like to ride in the car 
And I was actually dreading having to drive all the way to Nashville for my doctor's appointment, but it was fine. The car ride down, it never hurt me once, and we were on the way home, like I said, and I thought, you know what? I, the car is not hurting me. So that was a big milestone. So some things I still cannot do or I don't want to do. If you told me to stand up right this second and jump, I would say no way. Jumping, just the thought of it, I know would hurt me. So I'm avoiding that. Not that I jump all the time, y'all, I'm in my 50s, but I'm just saying I know that I wouldn't be able to do that. When I try to bend over and tie my shoe, it still is really uncomfortable because everything in your belly is kind of crunching into itself when you try to tie your shoe, and that is still really uncomfortable for me. If I have to bend over and pick something up off the ground, I bend really slow. I take the compression of my belly area slowly because I know if I went down real fast to pick something up, it would still hurt. So I actually wore jeans for the first time a week ago, and I was so excited. I shared it on Instagram that I had on jeans. Woo! I have something amazing to tell you. Are you ready? I'm in jeans! I'm in jeans! I'm in jeans! Yeah. I, you have no idea how excited I am. I have not been able to wear jeans or pants for that matter for six months months because of my fibroid, my hysterectomy, you know, all the things. But look at me, y'all. I am in jeans. I even have on a little belt. And you better bet your booty I'm getting out of the house today. And let me tell you what, though. That only lasted for about an hour. Those jeans came right off. And it wasn't because they were too tight. And it wasn't because they were pressing on my stomach. What bothered me was it's really hard to explain this, but it's almost like all of the nerves in my belly area where all of those incisions were and all of the, you know, trauma on the inside, those nerves and the skin all across my belly are still really sensitive. It's like they're electrical almost. And when I put on jeans, anything that is stiff, like a jeans because there's a zipper and a button, when that stiffness rubs against my skin, it really bothers me. It, it was after an hour, it almost got to the point that I was starting to get a little nauseous because it gave me the weirdest, most uncomfortable feeling on my stomach and I had to take those jeans off. So I'm still wearing leggings or just little pull-on Lucy pants. And when, if I'm at home, I'm in my pajama pants, something that is not restricting, not really pressing on me, and something that is soft and squishy, not hard and stiff like a pair of jeans. Because when you zip your jeans up and that zipper and that button, mm -mm, my stomach, uh, nerves in my stomach did not like that at all. But I'm getting there. I know the day will come. It's just not right now. And today, actually, I'm wearing a little dress. Let me stand up and show you. Lucy. I'm wearing a super loosey-goosey dress because we're going out to dinner and, you know, I can't wear pants. And so this is what I'm sporting. A little dress, but it's super cute. I love it. So when I was at my doctor's appointment, I asked him about my estrogen patch that I started taking in week three. He said, if it's working for you, I want you to stay on it. We don't want to change anything about it. Stay on it at least three months. Just give it time to do its thing. And then if we need to up it or lower it or, you know, we can. I was asking him specifically about the different methods of getting estrogen. I have a friend that has like a stick of deodorant and she rubs it on her arm right here twice a day. And he said that's an option, but for now he just wanted me to stay on the patch. I will say that the patch is starting because I'm putting it high on my behind. It's sort of making me itchy. Sort of, not all the time. If I think about it, I'm like, ooh, that's making me itchy. But if I don't think about it, it doesn't itch, which is super weird. But when I take a shower and I guess my skin gets hot, you can see redness where like the last three patches were on my booty. So something about it is maybe a little irritating, but I'm gonna stick it out for the three months and then regroup and see if I need to change something. Something I did learn from my doctor, and this is what blew my mind. When I came out of my doc, because my husband went to the doctor with me. When I came out of the room with my doctor and went to my husband who was in the waiting room, he said, well, what did he say? And I said, I'm 
released, number one. But number two, I could not wait to tell him what I learned. So my doctor, first thing he wanted to do was look at my belly area and touch all of my six incision sites. And he was feeling them. He's like, yep, they're healing really good. And I asked him, should I put vitamin E on these incision sites? Because I don't want to have scarring. I want I want the little spots to disappear. He said, well, you don't have any scarring. And I said, well, yeah, I do. If you feel them, you can feel a little lump in each of them. So he put his finger on each of them and kind of started laughing and said, that's not a scar. Those are stitches on the inside. And I said, stitches on the inside? And he said, yes, you still have stitches on the inside. And I said, well, I thought stitches would be gone after six weeks. They would be dissolved. He said, oh no, oh no, you still have lots of stitches on the inside and they're gonna be there for a while. So he took my finger and pressed on each of the incision sites and showed me like, see here, feel this, this is a stitch. This one has two stitches. This one, oh, these are all gone. But he actually made me feel each of the stitches and I could not believe it. I guess in my head, I thought stitches dissolved in a couple weeks and everything would kind of heal on its own. And he told me that was absolutely wrong. I did not think to ask him how long they would be in there. But when I was telling my husband this, he said, well, what are they gonna dissolve? And I said, I don't know. So I just simply Googled, how long does it take for stitches to dissolve? And the answer I found was, it really just depends on the type of suture material that your surgeon used and where the sutures are, but basically they can remain undissolved for up to six months. Pew, mind blown. I was totally mind blown. So once I learned this fun fact, that makes a lot of sense why I can't stretch and turn because I do feel a pulling feeling in my belly and it is those sutures. They're still in there. They're pulling and that is what the uncomfortable feeling is coming from. So I am feeling better. I am released. I'm excited to get back to normal life. I'm going to take it slow, little bits at a time. I'm going to walk more every day. I'm going to start with some really lightweight arm weights because I can tell my arms and my abs have gotten really weak because I haven't used them in seven weeks. Like nothing, I have not used them. And so I'm just excited to be able to pick up my weights and to do things and walk and stretch. And I'm gonna do baby steps, I promise, I promise. And I will probably do another follow-up video who knows, maybe six months from now. And if I come across any big milestones in my recovery, but for now, seven weeks later, I am feeling so much better. My night sweats are gone. I really am not experiencing symptoms of surgical menopause and life is good. Life is good. See you later.